So the next review is the cell. Remember to study what your teacher tells you to study. In my class, make sure you study all the highlighted material, but I do think this is a great place to start in your, your review for this topic, the cell. Metabolism is, or all of the chemical processes that happen to make your body work, that would be metabolism. In a cell, there is a phospholipid bilayer, and I showed that just in the last video, how that there is a phosphate-based head, and then there are fatty acid tails that face inward. You have this two-layer system. And then there are also proteins that go all the way through the cell membrane. Some of them are surface proteins that have little carbohydrate-looking trees on, those, on them. That makes your body realize that your cell is you. That recognizes the cell as self. Some proteins act as channels. Some proteins can actually change shapes to allow different ions, large or small, through. Some of these proteins require energy, and those are active transport systems, and we'll talk about those in just a minute. In a cell, the concentration gradient or in your, in your body, typically, or even in the air. Let's go to that. Usually simple diffusion is what makes things roll. Even perfume through the air is simple diffusion. So we're going from high to low concentration, typically. If it's facilitated diffusion, then we're talking about a carrier protein that's needing to change shape, probably, to allow this product through the cell. If it is active transport, one of the most Famous active transport pumps that I think about is the sodium potassium. Three sodiums out, two potassiums in, requires ATP for this to happen. Remember, ATP and active match together. Secondary active transport is where ATP might be used to, to pump a certain molecule across the cell membrane, and then when it reaches a high enough concentration, as it comes back down, it drags something else along with it. In one of the examples I've seen, it happened to be sugar or glucose that was pulled back across the membrane in a secondary active transport situation. Remember, active requires ATP, which means energy. Cell money is required to do that. Why? Because we're pumping against a concentration gradient, usually in these situations. If it's moving with the groove, if it's going from high to low, it doesn't take energy. That's called simple diffusion. Endocytosis is when we bring things into the cell. There are several different versions of this. Phagocytosis is cell eating, phenocytosis, cell drinking, and receptor-mediated endocytosis is where the cell can actually has a receptor that can receive a certain chemical that it wants. Remember that transcytosis is when something moves on the membrane through the cell and out the other side. That's kind of interesting to me. The mitochondrion is the powerhouse of the cell. The nucleus is the control center. That's where the DNA is usually contained. The nucleolus is where RNA is made. Let's talk about smooth endoplasmic reticulum and rough endoplasmic reticulum. We know that smooth endoplasmic reticulum stores calcium. It helps in detoxification. It also synthesizes cell membranes. I thought that was kind of cool what that does. It's smooth because it doesn't have ribosomes on it. What does a ribosome do for an endoplasmic reticulum? One thing, it gets the RER designation. Why is this important? Because on proteins, that's where translation takes place. And we're going to talk about that in just a minute. Once fats are made in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum or proteins in the rough endoplasmic reticulum, it's taken or sent to the Golgi apparatus for final packaging and processing, I believe. Glycosylation is one of the names. A peroxisome is a certain vesicle in your cell that helps remove toxic materials. Lysosomes can attach to uh, a vacuole that has, like in a white blood cell, if it's pulled in a bacterium, it can attach to help break down the bacterium into smaller pieces that are usable by the cell. In your cell, you have actin, myofil actin myofilaments, which, which help with the structure and shape of the cell. Intermediate filaments kind of has, have some of the same description. They're just a little bit larger. Microtubules are hollow, and these are train tracks for vesicles and organelles to move throughout the cell. 
kinesins and dynines are what help move these. It's quite incredible to see videos of this in action. The centrosome is, I've heard this called the microtubule organization center, but the centrioles are associated with this, and this is what strings up those lines across the cell that grab onto the chromosomes that help choreograph the movement during cell division or mitosis. Microvilli are little extensions of the cell that give the cell more surface area and flagella are like little tiny whips on sperm cells that help propel them through the water. Chromatin is the diffuse form of DNA inside of the nucleus and chromosomes are the condensed forms of DNA. Why is this important? Because as the DNA is kind of moved through the cell, these smaller pieces are much easier to manipulate, and, and that's my opinion. Let's talk about transcription and translation just for a minute. Transcription occurs in the nucleus. This is when messenger RNA copies from a DNA template. As this goes out into the cytoplasm, there are little introns that have to be removed. The exons have to be reconnected so that this can be a functional mRNA. Thymine is not associated with RNA. Remember that. There, look up, there are these three A, G, C, U codes on the messenger RNA. They're called codons that will eventually match with the anticodon on the transfer RNA on the ribosome. Remember, in translation, which is what I'm now starting to talk about, the transfer RNA matches to the codon and shuttles over amino acids. Remember that the first amino acid is methionine and it's coded by AUG. We also have about three stop codons that tell the ribosome when to quit moving on this strand, this messenger RNA strand. Everything kind of disassembles and the proteins as the transfer RNA shuttle in, they join and this whole process is called translation. I know I'm kind of going in circles with this. So for a minute, let me recap this. Messenger RNA copies the DNA in the nucleus. It has little introns in it that have to be snipped out. These exons are joined back together to form a functional messenger RNA that then reads through a ribosome. It could be a free ribosome. It could be a ribosome on rough endoplasmic reticulum. That process of making the protein is called translation. And in the process of translation, the ribosome itself is made out of ribosomal RNA. The messenger RNA feeds through it like a zipper. The transfer RNA matches its anticodon to the codon on the messenger RNA, and that's how it knows which amino acid to bring. The amino acids assemble in a long chain as this whole process happens transfer RNA shuttle in and out and then eventually the ribosome reaches a stop codon which tells the whole thing to disassemble and apparently the rough endoplasmic reticulum helps these proteins fold so that they can become functional then this little vesicle gets shipped over to the Golgi apparatus for final packaging and I have heard the word glycosylation associated with this. The vesicle can stay inside of the cell or be shipped outside of the cell as a cell product. Remember that replication occurs in the S phase of the life cycle of a cell. There is a G1, a S, a G2. G means growth, remember that. And in mitosis, there's prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and there is telophase. Remember, prophase is where the chromatin condenses down into little X-shaped chromosomes or something like that, and the centrioles begin moving. In metaphase, the chromosomes line up right down the middle on the equator, meta, mental. Anaphase, the chromosomes pull apart, the chromatids pull apart, migrate toward the centrioles. And then in telophase, there is a cleavage furrow that forms in animal cells, so that in the end, both daughter cells are a duplicate of the parent cell. 46 chromosomes in the human, you've got two cells with 46. Diploid, diploid, diploid. 2N, 2N, 2N. We're gonna see something kind of different when we look at meiosis. Meiosis is sex cell division, and in that case, the sperms wind up being 23 and the eggs 23, so that whenever those two come together, they make 46, which is human. 
So that concludes our brief review of the cell.